So I've heard you call what we're going to talk about now the secret sauce of the Christian life. Uh, what's the secret sauce in regular life? Oh, that's a great question. Well, there's this incredible restaurant called Bonefish Grill, and uh, it's one of my wife's and my favorite places to go. And so uh, one time, and one of the reasons we love it so much is because of this appetizer that they have, that they're famous for. One time, it's called the Bang Bang Shrimp, and I asked our server, what percentage of customers order the Bang Bang Shrimp? And, they, and, and the lady said 80 not, not just 80% who order an appetizer, but who get this one. Really? But the thing, and Bang Bang Shrimp is so popular that if you go online, there are so many uh, sort of do-it-yourself Bang Bang Shrimp recipes, right? You know, that promise that you can recreate the taste of it in the comfort of your own kitchen. And I am here to inform you and anyone watching that that is not possible. <laughs> uh, my wife, Megan, and I, we have tried and we have failed. Really? Okay. And you think about why, though. It's not that you can't replicate the shrimp. You can do that. It's not that you can't replicate the bread. It's the sauce. It's the sauce that is, makes it unique. When I think about the secret sauce of the Christian life, it's something that for many years, I, I wouldn't have necessarily pointed to, but, I, but I've come to really believe uh, just from studying the word and living life as a Christian that the secret sauce of the Christian life is the local church. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, not many people would think about that specifically when they're a student. What was your relationship to the church when you were a, a college student? I'm kind of thinking of all the various options on Facebook for a relationship. I, I think maybe I would describe it as, as a friend with benefits in the, in the sense that, uh, you know, I would, um, I was willing to be affiliated with the church. I was willing to attend uh, a church. I would dip in and kind of dip out. But the thing was there, there were strings attached. I, there, there was a relationship without real commitment. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I'd say that probably most college students approach church that way during their schooling years. Um, what do you wish you had known back then? Like what, if you could share some advice with our Summer Connect audience um, that you know now that maybe you could teach to yourself when you're a college student and then people can like learn from that advice? Yeah. Well, I think in college, I affirmed the value of community. And I understood uh, the importance, theoretically, of the church. So I would have never said, you know, I'm a Christian, but I don't, um, but I don't love the church. Uh, but I basically functionally lived as if I was a Christian who didn't need the church. Okay. Right? It was it was kind of a church optional Christianity. Church was um, an accessory to my Christian life. If you were to picture my life as a, my Christian life as a meal, the church was kind of like a side dish. Okay. It was on the table, but uh, it was not central in, in my affection and in my, my understanding. What is, uh, what's, what do you think is unique about um, the local church when it comes to uh, people's relationships? Well, one of the things that uh, I think is most unique about the church is the way that it can be a trailer for heaven, okay. a, a preview of the world to come. And when we think about what the world to come will be like, when we think about what that congregation will be at the end of time around the throne, it's going to be people who are not just a bunch of clones. It's going to be people who are different from one another, mm -hmm. but they've been united. P people who would really have, many of whom would have no natural reason to be unified. But the explanatory factor, the common denominator is Jesus Christ. And so I think the church can uniquely picture God's wisdom and power to the world. Because uh, as important as it is to have a good Bible study or campus fellowship group or um, youth group or, or whatever kind of grouping of Christians you could have, even our friendship, right? This is a good and beautiful thing and God smiles on it. But the reality is that if the world were to look at our friendship, Shelby, or my friendship with my uh, friends in college, and we were to say, well, the reason we're friends is because of Jesus, the world would say, okay, you can say that, but I'm pretty sure if we removed Jesus from the equation, you'd still want to hang out. Mm -hmm. But the neat thing about the church is that if you remove Jesus from the equation, ideally, these are people that do not have 
necessarily a lot in common. Right, and so right. it's something the world can neither understand nor explain. It's it's provocative and compelling in the best of ways. Yeah. And it draws people, yeah. To yeah, it, it's attractive. It draws people in. Yeah. What, uh, what, do you, what do you think our audience, knowing that they're college students, would specifically want to know when it comes to local church membership, which is a step, probably a little step further, what, what would it look like for a college student in, in connection to local church membership? Yeah, first let me just unpack that word a little bit because okay. we, we hear the word membership all the time, right. right? You go to Costco or Sam's Club or LA Fitness or whatever the, the gym in your town is called, and you can, you know, you go in and there's a huge sign that says membership, join today. Mm -hmm. And we all have memberships to things at, you know, just find a key ring near you and you can see all the various things you're a member of. Right. And so the idea of membership has become a pretty thin, diluted, and I would say uh, consumeristic sort of thing. Right. So if I'm going to uh, go into Costco, uh, some regions have Sam's Club, but if I'm going to Costco and they stop basically satisfying my needs, if I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm pulling out, right? I'm canceling the membership. I'm not going to renew uh, that's just kind of, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to the family of God, the household of God, uh, we have to be careful that we don't import a consumeristic understanding onto the church. And one more thing I want to say on this, Shelby, is that in college, I didn't really think church membership was important. In fact, we have a mutual friend, uh, and I remember he, our senior year, my senior year, he wanted to join a local church in town. Mm -hmm. And I was one of many people who kind of scoffed at him like, man, you're about to, you're going to be gone in six months. Why would you, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. But I think I've, I've since come to see like, oh, actually, no, he, he got it. He understood that there is a difference between being an attender, even a faithful, regular attender and a member. It's kind of like the difference between my wedding ring and my finger. I, I can, I can, you know, take my my ring off. If my ring were to fall off, we would say that that it became uh, disattached from my body. But if my finger came off, we would. There's a word for that. It we would say it was dismembered. Mm -hmm. And I and in some my wedding ring is a faithful attender of my body. But the good news is that. We're called to submit our lives, to commit ourselves to a local church in a formal way. And that's not something that, that, should, that should scare you. It's not just another thing on the Christian to-do list. You are not a mere piece of jewelry on the body of Christ. He doesn't want you to just be a ring on the finger that can be taken on and off. Mm -hmm. You are a vital, a vital body part. So that should show up. Our, our commitment to Christ should show up in our commitment to a church. Yeah, that's a great illustration. Um, with When you think about church membership, specifically with college students and high school students, yeah. those two um, times in our lives have a different feel to them than when you get older. How do you think the, the local church should view them and how should those high school students and college students view the church in, in return? Well, the local church should view them uh, not as second-class citizens or JV Christians, yeah. right? As if there's varsity Christians and JV Christians. No, the, the local church should view them as the future of the church. And so should um, and, and so should invest in them. And I find when I'm ministering to high school students uh, that they don't want to be treated like children or talk to as children. Yeah. So, uh, you know, throughout the week, they're learning trigonometry, they're learning algebra, they're learning biology they can handle a little theology, mm -hmm. right? We, we don't have to insult their intelligence right, by, yeah. um, you know, trivializing everything. And so I think one of the ways we can love the younger folks in the, in the church, whether high school or college students, is to, um, is to just treat them like the adult Christians that they are and that are, and they are becoming. And if you, you know, are a high school student or a college student, uh, I, I think it's important to start building the muscles now of commitment to the church, because the reality is that your youth group is going to kick you out one day. <laughs> if your youth group is your functional church, right, you're going to graduate from it. If crew, 
you know, and I, I love Crew, and I think it's so important to be vitally involved in a campus ministry such as Crew. But the reality is that the uh, the, the campus directors, the missional team leaders at your campus do not want 27-year-olds or 37-year-olds hanging around, around the large group meetings. You will graduate from crew, but you will never graduate from the church. So start now being an adult Christian, living as an adult Christian, committing to a church. Yeah, that's great. Now, what do you think the benefits are for the, the high school and college students being involved? Not only like gaining wisdom for the future on how to look at what life is going to be like eventually, what are some of the other benefits maybe that, that they would experience by being a part of the local church and committing? Well, I think I mentioned earlier how the, the church can uh, give a uniquely compelling witness for the gospel because of the unity in diversity. And the reality is that you can learn a lot from people who are like you, generally speaking, but you can learn a lot more and grow a lot more from also being around people who are unlike you. Yeah, yeah. And in college, it's it's good for evangelism, as we were talking about last week. So it's it's good to be around people that uh, uh, are very similar to you and that you can easily establish rapport and have a gospel conversation with. But when it comes to identifying your blind spots, mm. seeing areas where uh, you're weak and need to grow and need to be challenged, it's so helpful to be around people who have walked roads that you haven't or that you one day will. And so being in a community of people um, that are different from you, I think is really good spiritually. Okay, so you've, t you've talked about the benefits. What should a high schooler or a college student right now, what should they be looking for in a local church? That's such a, a vital question because when you think church, you, you, you may be thinking of that building on the corner of the street, mm -hmm. right? A that, place. That, a place. And not all, not all churches are healthy. Not all churches are um, even worthy of the name church. So you have to be discerning in uh, finding a church that is going to be a, a helpful, life-giving place for you spiritually, where you can flourish and grow as a Christian. So I think that, uh, I mean, I could give a long list, but I'll just keep it brief. Let's think in terms of gospel, community, and mission, those three things. So first of all, you want a church that is absolutely excited about the gospel. Of course, yeah. And a church, and by that, I mean the good news of what Jesus has done to reconcile, to restore rebels like us to himself, mm -hmm. to God. And so you want a church that preaches the gospel every single week, um, every sermon uh, preaches the gospel, uh, a, a church that um, makes everything uh, an implication of the good news. So the gospel needs to be first and foremost. Community needs to flow out of the gospel, and that means it needs to be a place that's not just like uh, the, the local gym or the Lions Club. No, this, this is a family where there should be tight-knit, life-on-life relationships where you are folding your life, knitting your life into those of others. You're living life together as a Christian, holding each other accountable, and um, submitting to godly leadership. And then mission. You want a church that is going to not just be all about intake, intake, but also about outflow. I just think of the first time the word church shows up in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 18, where, where Jesus says, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. I used to hear that, and I kind of had the picture of the church in retreat, the church on its heels, and Jesus saying, hey, you're going to be opposed, you're going to be attacked, but guess what? I'm not going to let the, the forces of hell storm over you. Mm -hmm. But I was missing the word gates. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Gates do not play offense. Mm -hmm. Gates play defense. Mm -hmm. So the picture Jesus is painting is that, hey, no, the church is going to be on mission, advancing, storming the enemy's gates. So you want a local church that resonates with that promise of King Jesus that we don't just need to get the gospel in, we need to get the gospel out uh, to our neighbors and ultimately to the world. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, great insight. So how do you think a ministry like Crew fits in the local church? Yeah. Let me just give an illustration that might help. So think about a speedboat as compared to an ocean liner. 
Okay. Okay. We would never say that because one exists, the other shouldn't. Because we have speedboats, we don't need ocean liners. Or because we have ocean liners, we don't need speedboats. Okay. I think sometimes people uh, create kind of a false dilemma or a false dichotomy when they talk about the church and then some kind of parachurch ministry or organization mm -hmm. like crew. But the reality is that we need both. They complement one another. They mutually reinforce one another. Of course, the church is central. The, the you know, crew should never replace the church. It should serve and supplement the church. But that doesn't in any way demote the importance of crew. Because think of, back to the illustration. Crew, I think, is a lot more like a speedboat in the sense that you on a speedboat can do a lot of things that you can't as easily on an ocean liner. So a speedboat can move really fast in quick bursts. A speedboat can also change direction. It can be creative and innovative uh, in rapid kind of rapid succession. It, it, it can be flexible and adapt to different environments and ch try new things one semester and another thing the next. And a speedboat can get into coves, right? which a college campus is, mm -hmm. a, a, a dorm complex is, a dining hall is. You can get into places easily. You are, are mobile and, and therefore effective. And so I'm so grateful for parachurch ministries like Crew to be able to um, serve that function. But we would be wrong if we just put a period there mm -hmm. because you can't live on a speedboat. You might be able to have lunch on a speedboat, but you can't live on a speedboat. But you can live on an ocean liner for a while. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do things from an ocean liner that you can't. And it's a more permanent uh, place where it's, it's kind of your anchor point, your base from which you can launch these other operations. And so both are important. Obviously, the church, which is like the ocean liner, is, is central and it's the thing from which everything flows. But in no way do I want to communicate that the, the, uh, the, the action step from what I'm saying, is to become less involved in crew. I am saying you need to become more involved and more committed to a church, mm -hmm. but that is not mutually exclusive um, with kind of living out the mission of that church on your campus through a ministry like crew. Right. Yeah. Hey, Matt, thanks so much for being with us. We really appreciate you spending time with us, unpacking the scriptures and challenging us. Summer Connect is uh, grateful for you being here. Yeah, it's been super fun. Thanks so much, Shelby. Yeah.